Do you ever struggle to get your most important goals done? Do you ever feel that it's very hard to change your habits, your behavior, even if you know that they are not the best for you? Last week we talked about how you can prioritize your tasks the best way possible, but there's not much point in doing that if you actually don't end up doing those tasks and changing. In this video, we're going to turbocharge your capacity for change so you can achieve 100% of your goals. And we'll be using five mental models for this. We'll be looking at where they're coming from and also how you can apply them in real life every day to help you with change. You can change. Time for the butterfly to get out of its cocoon. My name is Greg Angelbert. I've had about a 20 year corporate career where I went from being a trainee to eventually a managing director, a vice president of a business. And from just managing one person, myself, to about a thousand people. Today I'm a master coach helping people, teams and organizations to know themselves, to design their future selves and to become their future selves. So what's change anyway? Essentially, change is our capacity to adapt to the world around us so we manage to achieve the things which are most important for us in life. It is pretty much embedded into our DNA as a way for life to survive and to adapt. I like to put it in a simple way for myself. Last week, I mentioned that I prioritize my task, my goals in life, to make sure that I maximize the amount of happiness and peace of mind that I have, because those two aspirations are the most important for me in my life. And changing my behaviors and my environment is the way for me to achieve more happiness and more peace of mind. Change is painful. We just have to be realistic with that. It's because the autonomous system that we have in our brain is trying to minimize the amount of energy that we spend. So it sees every effort, everything which is different as something to be avoided. This is why we need mental models and systems to help us counteract these mechanisms that we have of limiting the energy that we spend. We want our prefrontal cortex to be the boss. So why are mental models useful for supporting your desire to change? Because they can help you work on understanding your mindset and how you can find ways to change that mindset. They can help you understand what makes you motivated to change. They provide efficient systems for building powerful habits. They help you work on your energy level so you can support the change you're trying to achieve. And they can help you gain more control over your decisions and actions. So I've picked five mental models which I think are very powerful to enact change in your life. If you have any others that are your favorites, yeah, you know, write them down in the description. I'm curious to hear about them. A key starting point in your quest for changing yourself is to understand your existing mindset. A simple model which was outlined in a book by Carol Dweck, a book called mindset is to talk about having a fixed mindset or having a growth mindset. Guess which one we want to have here. Having a fixed mindset is the belief that abilities, intelligence and talents are innate and unchangeable traits. Sometimes this belief is hidden. The person might be saying, hey, you know, I'm capable of change, but everything that they do will be pointing out at the fact that they do not want to change, that they are fighting against change. I also might feel threatened and discouraged by anything if I fail. That was very much me in my teenage years and my young adult years. I basically believed that I was born smart and that everything should be easy for me as a result. Hard work eventually taught me otherwise. Having a growth mindset is a belief that abilities and intelligence can be developed through effort, learning and perseverance. You are ready to embrace challenges, see failures as opportunities to grow and have very strong resilience when you face with obstacles. Steve Jobs is actually a pretty good example of somebody who used to have pretty much a fixed mindset when he started Apple. He was very smart, but at the same time, he wouldn't change a lot of things about the way he was, to eventually having changed a lot uh, for his second round at Apple when he restarted in 1997. Here are some ways that you can apply this model. Identify areas in your life where you might be exhibiting a fixed mindset. On those areas, seek out challenges, seek out experiences, seek out people who are going to bend a little bit your belief. And notice the pain that you have when you are trying to change. It's something perfectly normal, just accept it. And instead of focusing on pain, adopt a curious, inquisitive mind around the things that you see which are different. It might be new experiences or new information. And stop talking about failures. See all of this as experiments to get somewhere and acknowledge yourself for what you managed to change. Be nice with yourself, treat yourself. Change is also about being motivated to change in the first place. Fulfilling our core psychological needs that we have inside us is essential for having motivation to change. 
For that, I use a mental model of ARC, which is for autonomy, relatedness, and competence. It was coined by Susan Fowler in her book, Why Motivating Employees Doesn't Work and What Does. I'm going to give you a short version here. If you want to know more about it, there's a whole video about this model here. Autonomy is a need for individuals to feel a sense of control and self-direction in their actions and choices. Relatedness is a need for social connection, support, and a sense of belonging to something bigger than us. Competence is a need to feel capable, effective, and skilled in one's actions, and to be recognized for that. To be able to change, you need to embed the change that you want to have in an environment that supports autonomy, relatedness, and competence. This is to ensure that your psychological needs are satisfied, and therefore you will have high intrinsic motivation. Here are some steps to apply this model. Related to autonomy. Identify personal goals which align with your interests, with your values, and which are about bringing change. Then take initiative, find ways to do things on your own, to be self-reliant as a way of building autonomy. Link to relatedness. Connect with like-minded people who are doing the change, or have already done the change that you want to achieve. And get help, get people to help you with implementing that change and also help others, that reinforces you changing. Link to competence. Set yourself some realistic changes, some things that stretch yourself but doesn't go too far. And once again, celebrate success. Have people around you who are supportive of the change that you're trying to undertake and that will acknowledge it. You like this video so far? Then you know what to do and subscribe to the channel, put the notifications on if you want more content like this every week. And check out in the description more information and more videos about the same concept of change and mental models. It's always good to look at the topics through multiple voices. Okay, so you set your mindset, you maximize your motivation, now you need a powerful system to make change as easy as possible. I'm lazy. And to some extent, we all are, because we are trying to minimize the amount of energy that we use. Here comes the model of tiny habits. There are small, easy to implement actions that will bring large changes to your life down the road. This concept was created by Dr. B.J. Fogg, the founder of the Behavior Design Lab at Stanford University. It is based on the steps of having a cue, a routine, and a reward. The key observation from Dr. Fogg through his research was the fact that it's much easier to achieve change if you start with very, very small steps. That also intersects with the concept of compound interest, which means that the small habit that you build at the beginning and you progressively grow will have a compound interest over time and give a much bigger result. Here's a method to apply this model. Select specific behaviors that you want to adopt, the change that you want to make. Let's say you want to save money every month. Identify triggers in your life that can help with creating this new habit. Let's say it's your paycheck arriving. Craft simple, achievable actions that take about 30 seconds or one minute maximum to do. Let's say you withdraw the cash that you just received, that you want to save, put it in a safe. Also think about anchoring those new actions to things that you're already doing, some routines that you already have. For instance, to walk more during the day, I decided to do my Spanish lessons that I already do sitting while walking. Track your habits progress with an app, with a journal. It feels very good. Once you've reached that level where you're happy with your tiny action, then try to expand a little bit further, a little bit higher. For saving, you might set up an automatic system for the money to go straight into a savings account. It takes a bit more time, but then you have less effort later. And finally, get yourself a reward. It doesn't have to be a big reward, but, I don't know, go to a spa or, you know, get your favorite pastry. Now it's time to consider the level of energy that we can bring to changes in our life. Personal energy cycles are the natural fluctuation in our physical, emotional, and mental energy levels throughout the day. Those are influenced by our circadian rhythm, by the sleep quality that we have, by our diet, what we eat, the stress level we have, and the level of exercise we do. And also we have universal needs. We are quite different one from the other when considering those needs and those energy levels. So what is key is to understand your own nature. Let's look at a way to apply this model. The first step is to identify when you feel with the most energy throughout a day. For that, what you should do is monitor your energy levels. Take some notes. You can do that every day and do it over a week or even better over a month. 
Identify any patterns that you can see between your energy levels and the activities that you've had before or during the moment. You'll probably find, for example, that after a meal, you tend to have a lower energy level for a while, or if you sit for too long. So when you're looking at the changes that you want to adopt in your life, then put those changes when you have higher levels of energy. And also it's good to work on your low energy levels to find ways to improve that. For instance, you might have noticed that fast food might give you a spike of sugar, but then after you crash. Or if you're watching TV or you're looking at a lot of screens just before bed, that will impact the quality of your sleep. And yes, for having the best levels of energy, it's usually better to have good quality and quantity of sleep, of the food you eat, and exercise. And even during low energy level moments, they still happen, it's okay, you can spend some time to restore yourself, to restore your energy. Uh, you can also do some self-reflection or do a little bit of planning. How much do you feel you are in control of your life? This is another aspect of the mindset that we bring forward when we want to enact change in our life. So let's look at the mental model of locus of control. When someone has an external locus of control, they believe that external forces, luck or fate, primarily determine the outcomes of their life. That tends to produce helplessness when facing obstacles or blaming others for what's happening in your life or not taking any initiative. If you have an internal locus of control, you believe that your actions and decisions influence the outcomes you experience. You're likely to take responsibility for your actions, to believe in your abilities and to be proactive. Let's look at some methods to improve your internal locus of control. The first step here is to explore and understand your beliefs with regards to control and responsibility. What do you truly believe? about control and responsibility. Now think about the aspects in your life that you can truly control. I'm sure there are some, like the way you eat, the way you sleep, a few things for sure you can control. For those, what is the change that you would like to make? And use a tiny habits mental model to move forward one tiny step at a time for those changes. By doing that, you're building your sense of control and responsibility with yourself. And if there are areas where you think you cannot control them, then try the helicopter view. Looking at the whole scene, can you remove yourself from this environment you dislike that is blocking you? Or you can find some ways of changing this environment. There will always be some aspects of your environment that you cannot change and you have to live with. But even though, as Viktor Frankl said in his book Man's Search for Meaning, even in those situations, you have the choice for the attitude that you adopt. All right, well, we've covered five mental models for dealing with behavioral change. Well done for listening. Remember that practice makes perfect and you do not need to master everything I've talked about today. Easy does it. I will leave you with a quote from Mahatma Gandhi. Your beliefs become your thoughts. Your thoughts become your words. Your words become your actions. Your actions become your habits. Your habits become your values. And your values become your destiny. Having a sense of purpose is a very important way to anchor your need for change as every change you make will be towards the person that you want to become. If you want to know more, check this out.